image that came to me on this Sunday of the cross was that of a bicycle. Maybe because our little Jesse has never noticed how his, uh, his uh, mandate uh, on the face uh, took his bicycle on the road and uh, lo and behold he crashed uh, in the gravel and uh, that explains the, the face. But I remember often in my life seeing a bicycle in the dark and they had placed a little light on the, on the axle, on the axis. And they had put a little light on the rim of the wheel, and you would see a straight line, and then the one on the outside moving forward in some kind of a loop, like a, a spiral. Have you ever seen that? And to me, this is a great image of our life in the church, our life in the spirit, and the way our life should be. We should be moving forward in a direction of the kingdom of a higher form of life. You know, kind of like during some of those terrible wars that still happen actually, where all you have is a bicycle, and you want to escape a world of ruin, and chaos, and death, and you take your bicycle and, uh, and you go, and some people have escaped. Right? They've escaped into foreign lands, into moving from oppression to freedom when it was still possible. Think about East Germany, even before the wall was built, it was the last window to take a bicycle and escape. I think we need to be on a journey. And there's going to be perhaps those ups and downs of the journey, but there's going to be this, this center axis moving us forward. And the, the journal year is, is like this. Right? It's the same thing over and over again. So no, it's September and here comes the Feast of the Cross and this will be the fast for the Divinity, and there will be uh, the Lord's Baptism, then there will be Lent, and there will be you know, Pascha and Pentecost and summertime and again and again, as we say. Right? But it's because every time it's, it's moving us forward. But the one thing that I think is central is the axis it's, it's never changing. It can be preached every Sunday. It is the cross of Jesus Christ. It really is. You can look at every verse in the Bible, every chapter, in a roundabout way. It is about the cross of Jesus Christ. And that's the theme today, is to say, whatever else we may think is important in our life, in the world, in the news, in our studies, in our relationships, in our theology, it is about the cross. And, and today, as we start the new year, the church wants to remind us that it is the center of our existence. And it's not <coughs> an idea, it's a daily life. It's a daily life. We could go through every verse in the Bible with the word cross, but that would probably take a while. So we won't do it. We can look in our Bible works. As you know, I'm a, an endorser of Bible works. If you don't have Bible works or a similar program, you need to have one. And you type crucified, and you look at every verse that has the word crucified. <coughs> it's like mining a gold mine. And you discover that the first verse in the Bible with the word crucified is in Matthew 20, 19. I think it's always significant. It says, Jesus is speaking. Then they will hand him over, which is me, right? Him, the Messiah. Over to the ethnos in Greece, the foreigners, the nations, the Gentiles, by us. To be mocked and flogged and crucified. And on the third day, he will be raised. See, it doesn't happen to Jesus. He announces that it will happen to him because he wants it. The cross is always something that's planned by God in Trinity for us. It doesn't just happen to Jesus. And then in the book of Acts is the first sermon after Pentecost. And then you find the word crucified. And St. Peter is preaching and he says, it's very strange in a way, he says, this man, this man Jesus, handed over to you according to the definite 
plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of the ethnos of those outside the law. He's putting the blame on the Jews. They have crucified, even though it was always God's plan to redeem. And so we enter the mystery of the cross. It is a mystery. And then now, do one more verse. In Romans, right, this incredible, beautiful book, difficult book, it's only once, so it's easy to choose the verse. It's Romans 6, 6. It says, knowing this, now when the Bible says knowing, it really means recognizing this. Recognizing this, that your old human nature was crucified with Him, that the body of sin might be done away with. We should no longer be slaves to sin. So today, as you see, of course, the church wants to make it as obvious as possible. Every Sunday, right? We make the sign of the cross 15 times. The priest is lifted on the cross. You come to kiss the cross. The cross is everywhere, right? But sometimes it doesn't work, does it? Because when you see it so much that we don't really think about it. it, it can even be used as a decoration. I'm always I'm struggling with the cross as a decoration, I have to say, because the cross isn't a decoration. It should always evoke in us what it's about, at the very least. There should be a purpose for it. So when you see the cross today, and I ask you, who do you see on the cross? The answer is, my Lord and Savior and myself. And my whole human nature. This is for us to realize that there is a way out of this body of sin, body of death. We were crucified with the Lord. Now, some of our great saints went on to an extreme, it may seem, to never forget the cross. I've, I've never been to Kodiak, maybe one day we will. But if you go there, you will see the cross that St. Herman, you can see it, you a sense for it, used to wear. How big is that cross, or rather, how heavy is that cross? St. Herman always wore a heavy cross. To never forget what it was about. And we'll see what it's about. It's about the love of God. It's us loving God because God loves us. And he would stand with the naval officers in that beautiful ship and he would say, So, what do you want the most in your life? And they answer, Oh, uh, be, become a captain of my own ship, a beautiful ship, uh, go back to the motherland and find a beautiful wife and beautiful estate. And, and poor. Poor St. Herman says, oh, what about God? We made all these beautiful things. Is he not worthy of your love? And, and they say, oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Yes, he is surely worthy of our love. But you see, he was wearing the cross to never forget. That all the sufferings that he experienced, that he tried to relieve, spoke about the love of God. And so we hear it in the gospel. We need to take up the cross every day, every day. We need to die, as St. Paul says, daily. Our crucifixion is something we, we start when we wake up, which is why the fathers say, it's, it's hard to do, but you get out of bed, and before your second foot has hit the floor, you know, you've done the sign of the cross. And you because you say, you know, this is, this is the meaning of my life. Before Christians, it took me a while to, to get to this point, but I'm convinced of it. The world only makes sense through the cross. The, the murders, the rapes, the violence, the, the hatred, the insanity, the poverty, the injustice. I think nothing makes any sense apart from the cross. Once we behold the cross and see the greatest seemingly senseless, unjust evil is used by God as the greatest good, then we can believe that God, do, God is able to change our evil act into good. Well, it's, the, it's the sermon of Pentecost. God has foreordained the cross to save us, but you crucify it, and you better read it. There is evil in the world, but all evil can be turned into good by God. And so all things have a meaning because God is the work. All things are to good for those who love Him. You can look at your own life. 
at, at your sufferings, your disappointments, your sometimes uh, yeah, your really your bitter things in life. They make sense. They are meaningful if you are in the light of the cross. And so for Christians, the cross is the difference between a meaningless experience and a world that is filled with the, the operation of God, moving to glorify Him. And it gives us hope and joy. And I think we can really live this way. Live this way. And give hope to people. Second theme today, the first one, in case I didn't say it, the first theme was the constant axis of our life is cross. The second is uh, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit and the cross and the kingdom are inseparable. Inseparable. In fact, if you, well, we don't see it now, but access to the kingdom, which is symbolized by what we call the altar, right? there's a cross there. It's the means, the great color of the Holy Spirit. The cross and the Spirit are at work. At work. They're inseparable. The one verse comes to mind is 1 John 5.8. It's a famous verse. Though I think you know people are forgetting famous verses these days. There are three witnesses. Remember that verse? There are three witnesses. And I think it's about the cross. The Spirit, the water and the blood. And these three agree, okay, these three are one. So yes, it's theology, but it's also something to take home. To take home. To, to, to live like St. Paul, the power of the cross every day. Now, for example, um, every day, some things come our way that the flesh detests. If you're a father, it could be the screaming sound in children. If you're a young father, it could be the, you know, the fourth diaper you have to change. If you're a married man, a married woman, it could be your husband's lack of attention. There's all kinds of things. Right? It could be your the aches in your body. With if you live in the flesh, we'll have frustration, anger, bitterness, and nothing more. We'll find refuge in the things of the flesh. Entertainment and food and drinking and perhaps something despair. But if we are able to live by the cross, everything speaks to us of the love of God. Everything in our crystal, so to speak, tells us of the love of God. You know, to use this image, changing a diaper for your child is a blessing. It's the love of God. And even if it's suffering, think about the love of our God and Father who is dealing with us and we do with forgiveness. This image of a crystal, I think, is, is a perfect image. And I'll finish on that, I promise. You know, there's this idea in the Orthodox Church, which I like, and I don't want to take it too far, that hell is the love of God received as pain and suffering. It's just very nice to, to, to explain it out this way to people who don't want to hear about it. So, hell is that God loves a constant fire, and some people receive this fire as burning hell. And for others, it is just sublime, everlasting, glorious light. Like in the song for Pascha, right? there's those that burn like wax, but the faithful rejoice. To me, it's like the radios of the 1950s, right? There was a crystal in it, and it had to be just finely tuned to receive the program. And it played the beautiful music. But then it was beautiful music was on the radio. But if the crystal was out of tune, it was just this troubled, unbearable noise. I think for us to live in the cross is to receive everything finely tuned, and everything speaks a lot. Even, even suffering, somehow we believe the crucifixion speaks the love of God for us and for us all. And if we live that way, what a difference it makes. One man who lived this way, I believe, was St. Innocent's predecessor and friend and mentor, St. Philaret of Moscow. St. Philaret found a prayer written by a, a French a bishop 
they fit in the spiritual writer and he loved that prayer. And he became known as the prayer of St. Philaret. So we'll give a little bit of credit to, to, to Fenelon who wrote the prayer. And it's the prayer of living in such a way. And I'll finish this way. You can actually purchase it at a festival and put it on your fridge. Though admittedly, it's hard to, to look at it every day. It's on our fridge. We look at it rarely, but we should. Oh Lord, grant that, that I may meet the coming day in peace. Help me in all things to rely upon thy holy will. In every hour of the day, reveal thy will to me. Bless my dealings with all who surround me. Teach me to treat all that comes to me throughout the day with peace of soul, with a firm conviction that thy will governs all. In all my deeds and words, guide my thoughts and feelings. In unforeseen events, let me not forget that all are sent by thee. Teach me to act firmly and wisely without embittering or embarrassing others. Give me the strength to bear the fatigue of the coming day with all that it shall bring. Direct my will. Teach me to pray. Pray thou thyself in me. Amen. To him who guides us and saves us by the cross, be the glory for the Father and the Spirit, always, now, and forever, unto ages and ages. Amen. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory to God.